In Britain, 12 million children space to play. City child has a raw deal from life. Liverpool replaces its slums with new blocks, but the children must still play. With one fifth of council building as high flats, parents become concerned for their children. There's nowhere at all for a child to play. You might play on the bottom, but then there's motor cars turning and backing up. You can't uh, leave them on the road. So they've got nowhere to, at all to play unless you take them out. But then again, you think if you had to park, you'd have to be going up and down. You'd be like a yo yo. These Liverpool blocks built between the wars are a reminder of where the best intentions can lead. Children feel imprisoned in them. The roundabouts and swings are broken. The children are forced to play in corridors or on the streets. But how do they dream of playing? Cricket and tennis and play on the street. We go to a park, we do a swing and monkey ladders and soft grass. Swings, stilts, uh, I'm getting football. I like swimming pools um, because it's my best hobby and in the sun, um, when it's hot, you know, it keeps you cool. And I like trees because when you're playing hide and seek, you, you can climb up them. I prefer to a, a playground where you could make things like an adventure playground. I'd make stools and things like that. I'd like a swimming pool <coughs> because you can uh, dive and swim. Uh, if you can swim good, you can go to swimming galas. I mean, galas. Flat playgrounds are better than nothing, but they're dull. City children need relief from the eternal right angles of the streets, and they can find it here, in a playground that uses natural rock outcrops, where they can slide and climb as they need to. Railings, too, are a challenge. Children like child-size enclosures. Aimless play can become tedious. A play leader can transform a playground. I'm the leader of the Grenville Playground, Liverpool. This is a somewhat unusual playground in that it uh, not only caters for the conventional play equipment of swings, uh, uh, giant strides, monkey ladders, uh, and also a, a five-a-side football pitch, but it also incorporates very unusual mountains uh, with slides fixed to them and tunnels running through them. It also has a paddling pool for water play. It has a castle built out of a demolished public house and we have also an area of grass which was requested by the children after they had been to many local parks. In London the LCC faced some of the same problems and came up with some of the same answers. In 1959 they started the scheme of play parks, enclosures for children only within an ordinary park. This is Victoria Park in East London. There's no doubt that most children find the play park better than an ordinary park. Where's all the swings and the tire slides and it's much better than an ordinary park. In the old dairy runs, uh, you have trees but you can't climb up them. But you have trees in here and you can climb up them and snow any tree you like. More things to do. You don't have to stick with all the rules and everything. There's nothing else to do really. Well, uh, as, now, especially at the end of the holidays, there's no good films to see, because they're all A's or X's. Oh, wait, wait, and here she comes, ballerina! Come on, Ted, pass it. Oh, you're chicken, come on. Yeah, I don't know what I thought. Come on, pass it on that. 
<laughs> Come on, Granny. Oh, get out of it! Come on, then. London and Liverpool share the conviction that a playground without a play leader is to some extent wasted space. But as yet, most play parks open only in school holidays and during the light evenings in term time. Most of the play leaders themselves are teachers doing the work part-time. All of them, like Nick Roberts, are hand-picked and trained and enjoy a special relationship with the children. And the kids are very helpful and uh, they help me a lot. And uh, you know, a good bunch of kids, so there's no problems really. One of the chief sat satisfactions is uh, providing entertainment for kids during the holidays. Um, holidays are six weeks, eight weeks. It's a long time, you know, for kids to uh, occupy themselves and to, to find some sort of amusements for them, you know, without them getting run down or getting in trouble. I think that's the biggest satisfaction. Nick is on the mark, he's on the mark, he's good. He's very good. You can have a laugh with Nick. Play leader, and, but the only thing is you don't, you mustn't take advantage of him. And Nick, you know, he can take a joke like some people. And oh, Nick, I'm having a side like the bloke, Nick. He's got a good personality, good bloke to talk to. He's really better than any of the others we've ever had. He's a better bloke. And if Nick wasn't here, if Nick wasn't here, um, there'd be a lot of accidents and things like that. He lets you have anything there when he's got it there. It's all right, good bloke. He lets you do certain things beyond the limit, you know. Yeah, but laughing is... It's a meeting place. It is scary. The need for playgrounds is acute in areas like Notting Hill, where new flats are going up to replace the old terrace houses and a mixed population causes social troubles. Yet, demolition itself can provide play materials. The Notting Hill Adventure Playground is one of the four adventure playgrounds in London run by voluntary committees. The children of this hard-hit area respond sharply to its particular flavour. That's simple why I come here to enjoy myself. Nearly every day. Nothing else to do during the summer holidays or any other holidays. You have, you have a bit of fun, you know. You're still going out the street looking for trouble, you know, just lurk about in it. And they have jazz and things in there. You can just walk in and build anything, but in other places you have to pay to go in. I like building cats. Well, then it keeps the time away, doesn't it? You know, when, you, when, you're, like, when you're mucking about here, yeah, you get fed up. So instead of getting fed up, you just come around here and have a look about, and when you feel like it, you go. Well, it's something to do, isn't it? And I, I enjoy myself building. I come in here nearly every day, except when it's shut. Instead of larking about the street, sometimes you can get yourself in trouble. But you find lots of things here to do, instead of getting into trouble. You can, you can just sit down and look. That's something to do. You've got to find something to do, is not you? Because there's all sorts of things. I was starting to do, isn't it? I don't know, really. Starting to do, isn't it, when you ain't got nowhere to go on the holidays? Well, it's something out of all, isn't it? Well, you, you can't go over places and start building things like this there, can you? Oh yeah, you have more fun here than what you wouldn't know ordinary playground. Just swing. Yeah, they can do what they uh, what they want to do, but in a ordinary park they can't, can they? The children here take their example from the man who has found the work he likes best in Notting Hill, their full-time play leader Pat Smythe. Personally, I myself don't like to classify kids in types. Everyone that comes to visit us here, and we get many, many visitors, social workers of all description, they always come in and say, what type of kid do you get here? Uh, well, I don't think they are types, they're just kids to me. People have just got to take a real interest in them, take part with them and do things with them. 
and uh, then only can you really get to know these kids. We have contact with various families. We go around and meet the families for various reasons. Sometimes I have a little bit of trouble. They come around and they probably talk to me, whereas they wouldn't to another person, just as a friend more than anything else. Nails and scrap wood are the big feature of the Notting Hill playground. Fashions in what to make with them change day by day. Make swords. We've got one big long, one big long place and a little place. We're banging together, isn't it? Tents. Make uh, little swings. Banging nails in the middle. Breaking wood up. When you ain't got nothing to do, get put some old uh, cloths in there and chairs and everything there. Marshall Dillon. You know, he, he does a gun draw and every... Uh, the man who he does a drop gun draw with, the man shoots first and he ducks down and then he shoots and he shoots the man instead of him. The traditional work on adventure playgrounds is with saw, hammer and nails. When the mood takes them, all the children on the playground seem to be hammering at once. Voluntary playgrounds like this are usually supported by local authorities and by organisations like the National Playing Fields Association and the Save the Children Fund. But inevitably, the real success must always depend on the man on the spot, the play leader. It is rather difficult, or has been, rather difficult to organise them. In the, the normal type of game, like football, cricket, these type of things, they just, they just don't go for these conventional games. I don't know why, probably because they get too much of it at school. So, in here we tried to uh, organize them in other games, like uh, going around the course together as a team. And I feel that they come to rely on each other a little by doing this, and work as a group, as a team, which I, I think does help the chap's character. Under the 1944 Education Act, it is the duty of every local education authority to secure adequate facilities for recreation and social and physical training. Adequate is a word only too open to interpretation. None of the play leaders you have seen is paid £20 a week or its part-time equivalent. Most are paid much less, but the happiness and the future of 12 million children could depend on them. <laughs> <laughs>